Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your host HD Sam right here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here to bring y'all a new what if. This being the what if movie to what if Asta was Toji Fushiguro's reincarnation. Thank y'all so much for tuning into this what if and with that being said, let's get started. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're responsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, yo You gotta take it slow, you can't be a pro Don't waste your time no more Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? To begin the what if, we're now gonna start off with Asta's origins In this timeline, instead of Asta being left behind in Hodge Village He would instead be raised by Richita As her love for her child was so strong to the point where she kind of ignores the wise decision of leaving him back at the orphanage. She just couldn't comprehend leaving behind her child. So due to that, she ends up raising Asta. Although at first she was extremely worried that Asta would end up getting in trouble thanks to her condition, as she was absorbing life from everything around her. But to her surprise, somehow, someway, Asta was immune to it. This will be due to the fact that Asta was Toji's reincarnation, as Asta was unnaturally strong for his age, and not only that, but the heavenly restriction was actually preventing Asta from being affected by Lichita's condition. Now Lichita will be thanking whoever was looking after her as she got the blessing of being able to raise her son properly. As after that, she ends up raising Asta for the majority of his life until eventually they end up meeting up with Libe. Libe was extremely injured when he was found but thanks to Lichita, she ends up patching him up and soon eventually ends up raising, her, raising him as her own son as she basically ends up adopting him. This ends up allowing Lichita to raise both Asta and Libe, as the both of them will treat each other like brothers. But unfortunately, as good as things were going, things will all come to an end as Lucifero tries to take over uh, Libe's body so that way he can go to the human world. Now this will be during a picnic and Asta being unnaturally strong and having higher re reflexes as well as strength, he will try to restrain Libe from doing anything. All the while Lichita tries to prevent Lucifero from getting out. Now Lucifer will be extremely pissed off, so he decides to attack Lichita as he ends up shooting out a magic bullet. This ends up piercing Lichita to the stomach, surprising Asta and Libe as they both cry out to her. But Lichita is not willing to give up, so with the last amount of her strength, she decides to seal Libe into a grimoire, preventing Lucifer from using him to gain access to the human world. As right before Lichita fully passed away, she ended up telling Asta and Libe how much she loved them and at the same time she wishes both of them to take care of each other now that she was gone. As after that, Lichita would end up passing away and for the next following days it was extremely hard for the brothers. Asta after Lichita's death actually shed tears for the very first time and Libe was an emotional wreck as he would be stuck inside the grimoire not being able to do anything. As eventually time would go by, Asta would be the first one to recover as he had to be strong for his brother. So after making a mental connection with Libe after getting, in getting into contact with the Grimoire, Asta ends up confronting and comforting Libe as Libe blames himself for Lichita's death. Luckily Asta is there as he ends up telling Libe that it wasn't his fault and not only that but he ends up telling Libe that the both of them are going to be together and are going to put an end to Lucifero as revenge. And Libe after hearing this will be very grateful to have Asta as just like that both of them will have a strong resolve to get revenge on Lucifero together. Later on eventually, Asta had to be the one to bury Lichita's body, and while Libe did want to help, unfortunately he was still stuck in the grimoire, as he, as he still didn't know how to, exactly, how to exactly get out of it. So after burying Lichita's body and making his final prayers, Asta would end up leaving his home village, along with Libe, as they both try to survive for the next following years, as we do a time skip. Now we time skip to when Asta is finally at the age of 12. Now throughout this time, Asta would spend his time purely grinding, as him and Libe were trying their best to survive in this world. As both of them would be trained to make sure that they were strong enough for the next time they encountered Lu Lucifero, and bounty hunting was actually a pretty big benefit for the both of them, since this was also not only just training but a way to get money. So this allowed Asta to, fa to face off against enemies, gaining more and more experience, as well as find out how unnatural his body really was. As whenever Asta were to grab a hold of a weapon, he would instantly know how to use it. It was weird, but Asta would soon realize that his body was basically meant to be a weapon. As Asta knew how to use any weapon that he got his hands on, not only that, but he was unnaturally strong and fast, had amazing senses, had an incredible intelligence. Overall, Asta was practically meant for this type of business. As time would go by for both Asta and Libe, 
Eventually, Austin actually begins to store weapons inside the grimoire, allowing Liwei to get more pages. This allows Austin to get the Demon Slayer sword eventually too, as that was the very first spell that Liwei ever got. And not only that, but Liwei also got a bunch of other pages too, as Austin ends up storing weapons for certain situations. As this is where we now turn back to the present. Now Austin by this point was currently sitting across a very wealthy individual, as the man was trying to pay Austin to hunt someone for him. Cause you see, by this time, since Asta had been bounty hunting for so many years now, Asta had actually gotten a reputation, as he was known as the Mage Hunter. Since the majority of the people that Asta had killed during this point were people who were rogue mages or people who were ex-matching knights. So thanks to this, Asta ended up getting quite a famous reputation, although no one knows his real name. As we turn back to the discussion at hand, we see Asta talking to the man as the man begins to ask Asta, if he could hunt down the wizard king, Julius. Now, Asta at first didn't want to agree to this, but the man was willing to offer up his entire fortune, as all he wanted Asta to do was to kill Julius, the wizard king, especially for someone as young as him. But still nonetheless, Asta ends up accepting, as the main reason for this one is because he wants to test out his own skill, plus on the off chance that he actually does kill Julius, that means that he might be ready to face off against Lucifero. So eventually we now turn to a couple of weeks, as by now, Asta had been planning for his fight for Julius and has already made preparations, as he made sure to wait until Julius overworked himself, before finally approaching him in the dead of night. As Julius was finally done with his work study as he prepares to go to rest, this is when he would then be shot in the shoulder by an arrow, an anti-magic arrow. This will be one of the weapons that Asta had actually put inside the grimoire, as Julius will be so caught off guard by this that he ends up barely dodging the attack from Asta. As after dodging the attack, both Asta and Julius would then fight off against each other. Now Julius tries his best, but the thing is the anti-magic arrow is affecting his, his control over his magic. So due to this, he's not able to keep up with Asta. And this ends up leading Julius to become wide open from many attacks, allowing Asta to get a pretty big hit in here and there. Until eventually Asta decides to finish him off, as he ends up hitting him with the Demon Slayer Sword, giving him some heavy blunt damage. As after that, he ends up pulling out a pretty sharp sword as he ends up cutting Julius up giving him multiple slash marks all around before also pulling out a knife as he ends up stabbing into Julius multiple times. As after this, Julius looked like he was completely dead, as he, as he was bloody all over with multiple slash marks. As Asta ends up taking away the Wizard King's robe as a way of proving that he killed him, not only that, but he also ends up taking away the, the anti-magic arrow and every other weapon that he used to fight him. As after that, he ends up leaving the area. But unaware to Asta was the fact that Julius was still alive. As as soon as Asta had removed the anti-magic arrow, Julius was able to regain full control over his magic as he ends up using his magic to rewind time on his body, allowing for it to return back to how it was before he fought Asta, as he ends up thinking in his mind how impressed he was. As we now turn back to Asta as he would arrive back to his contractor, the man began to praise Asta for his hard work as he ends up taking out the robe that was extremely bloodied thanks to Asta's fight against Julius. Now after the man compliments Asta by a lot and gives him bags full of money, as Asta prepares to take it all away and leave, this is when suddenly a blinding light will fill up the room as this is when the man would then replace himself with none other than Julius, surprising Asta. As it turns out that the man was actually Julius in disguise as he actually asked Asta and paid Asta to hunt him down, which was confusing. As later on time would go by, Julius would end up explaining to Asta why exactly he did what he did as the truth is, Julius was actually interested in Asta and his reputation, as he actually decided that he wanted Asta to work for the Clover Kingdom. Now, after he ends up talking to Asta, Asta ends up declaring that he won't join a Magic Knight squad, since after hunting so many, ma um, so many ex-Magic Knights, he gets a good idea about what Magic Knight does, and honestly, he thinks it's a bunch of bullcrap. But Julius ends up telling Asta that he doesn't have to join a Magic Knight squad, as instead, he wants Asta to lead a whole entire unit. As apparently Julius's idea was the fact that he wanted someone to work underground, pretty much working in secret and protecting the Clover Kingdom and, not, and annihilating any threats that come its way. As after that, he also explains to Asta that he wants him to be the leader of it. Now Asta ends up hearing about this and he's deeply in surprise as he begins to ask Julius why him, because of the fact that Asta is still a 12 year old boy, not only that but he definitely knows that he's not the strongest person around. But this is when Julius ends up explaining that Asta has way more experience than any normal adult and that he knows that Asta can do it. And after hearing this, Asta would debate on whether or not he should agree. And after thinking about it, he decides to agree to it under certain conditions. 
to which Julius would actually agree to every last one of them, as for this is where we now do a time skip to the future. So we now turn to when Asta is actually 15 years old, and by this time, Asta has grown stronger along with Libe, as Libe is actually strong enough to the point where he's actually able to make a physical form and be on Asta's shoulder. Now during this time, Asta had fulfilled the requirement of being the leader of this new unit, as he actually ended up building it up from the ground. As you see, during this time, Asta had been the one to be appointed the leader of it, and not only that, but he had to actually recruit members himself, meaning that Asta had to actually go out there and handpick members, as over time, Asta was actually built a small miniature army of them, as these would mostly be ex-bounty hunters, as many of them needed their new jobs, and jobs that actually play, that actually pay well. Luckily, Asta ends up getting permission from the Wizard King, and the Wizard King is willing to pay for them, so... All of them decide to work for the Clover Kingdom and work for Asta. Not only that, but Asta ends up, also ends up getting four generals that all work alongside of him and who Asta actually consider his best friends. One of them would be Sora, as in this timeline he doesn't join the Black Bulls. Instead, he actually ends up meeting up with Asta way earlier and eventually ends up becoming friends with him. And over time, after becoming friends with him, he would then decide to join the squad as many would think of Zora as if he's Asta's right hand man or the second captain. The next one would be none other than Radies, as Radies in this timeline was actually found by Asta before he joined the Midnight Sun, and after a little bit of convincing and after complimenting him on his magic, Radies would decide to actually join Asta's group, as thanks to his magic being very versatile and very useful, he plays a key role in it. The next person to join would be none other than Nij, as just like Radies, Asta found him before he joined the Eye of the Midnight Sun, and although it did take a lot of convincing, Asta was able to actually have Nij join the group, with Nij seeing Asta as his older brother, and he also sees everyone else as friends in the group. And for the final member, it will be none other than Nero, as she will be the last general. During Asta's travels, he eventually ends up encountering Nero as an anti-magic bird, to which Libby ends up explaining that she isn't one. Over time, Asta begins to communicate with Nero, and although at first she didn't communicate with him, later on eventually she would. And soon, after talking with each other for so many years, eventually Nero will end up showing Asta her true form, and not only that, but she also begins to explain to Asta about her backstory, as well as the word demon, as well as the story of the elves as well. Now, this ends up surprising Asta, but still nonetheless, he considers her a friend, and Nero would actually consider Asta a friend as well. As later on, Asta also ends up explaining his own backstory, as Nero would actually sympathize with Asta, and eventually later on, she would decide to join the group, as the final general, as she decides to join them mostly because of the fact that she believes that with Asta's help, as well as the rest of the group's help, they would be able to prevent any more disasters from occurring, as well as prevent any more demons from emerging. As now with all that being said, we can now turn back to the present. As currently right now, Asta was on a mission. Julius had actually sent out Asta on an urgent mission to save the Black Bulls. As currently right now, they were in a dungeon together along with the Golden Dawn, but unfortunately things had taken a turn for the worse. As we now turn to the dungeon. Yuno was currently facing off against Mars, and helping him right now would be none other than Luck, as now that Asta wasn't here to actually help them since Yuno didn't grow up with Asta, and no one knew of him, they were currently left alone to face off against Mars. Now Mars would be currently beating up on the both of them, as he was swarming them with mineral clones, as, making, as well as making multiple mineral blades. Yuno would try his hardest, but unfortunately he was running low on magic, and not only that, but his body couldn't handle it anymore. Lug would be trying his best, but unfortunately he too was getting exhausted. All the while, Magma would be staying behind, as he would replace Asta currently right now, as he would be trying to defend Mimosa and Noel. But unfortunately, even he was running low on magic. As everyone was trying their best to help out in the fight, this is when a generous mineral blade was actually approaching Noel and Mimosa. Now Magma seeing this will dodge out the way, but as he does, he then remembers Mimosa and, Ro and Noel, as he ends up screaming at them to move out the way, but unfortunately they stood still. Mimosa could possibly be fine since Noel had a water barrier protecting her, but for Noel, things were not going to be as good. As Mimosa was screaming at Noel to dodge out the way, unfortunately Noel was too late, as she closes her eyes, thinking that it was finally time for her to die, but this is when suddenly, breaking the mineral blade in an instant, and appearing right in the middle of the group would be none other than Asta. As Asta, after he landed, would take in the entire area, 
He begins to analyze everything before understanding the situation, making sure everyone got back safely as after that he then begins to fight Mars. And this is when everyone will watch in shock as this person who they don't know would instantly begin to defeat Mars, someone who all of them combined couldn't even defeat. Asta will make quick work of Mars as Mars was not able to keep up. He would keep trying to make Asta talk to him or trying to say anything but unfortunately Asta was way too focused on combat as thanks to the help of Libe, Asta was able to defeat Mars with ease. Before Asta eventually decided to finish him off as he ends up bringing out a sharp blade and is able to send out an anti-magic slash as he ends up slashing Mars across the chest preventing him from using any more of his magic and knocking him unconscious. Everyone would watch in shock as Asta did all of this in under one minute, surprising them. As Asta after taking care of Mars would end up looking to the rest of them before telling them that the Wizard King told them to complete their mission. This ended up surprising them since they didn't know that Asta knew the Wizard King, but before they can ask Asta who he was, he ends up leaving the area, surprising all of them. As now seeing that there was no other choice, they decided to complete the mission before deciding to ask the Wizard King later on exactly who the individual was. As we now do a time skip. After exiting out of the dungeon and getting all the treasures, we now see the teams now going to the Wizard King the very next day. The teams will consist of the Golden Dawn, which being all of them, and from the Black Bulls, it will only be Noel, as Magma and Luck decide to stay behind. Now eventually they end up arriving to the Wizard King and they give a report about everything that happened, as well as Yuno showing off the new spell that he got in. But the thing is, as Yuno was explaining this, this is when he begins to ask the Wizard King who was the person that was defending them. And instead of just saying Asta's name, Julius just says that it's one of the people that work for the Clover Kingdom in the shadows. Now this answers their question, but at the same time it doesn't. But still nonetheless they're satisfied with that, so they decide to move on. As we now turn back to Asta, he will be back at headquarters as him along with the rest of his group will be currently training, as this will be a daily training routine for them as they all train to control their magic and bring out the best that they can. As slowly but surely every last one of them begins to get stronger and stronger, all until suddenly Radius would then stop as he announces that the kingdom was about to be attacked. Now this causes all of them to harden their expressions as every last one of them would then disappear. As we now do a little bit of a time skip. Back in the Clover Kingdom, we see things going quite smoothly as they are currently enjoying their banquet. But as they were enjoying their banquet, this is when we then turn to see that outside of the Clover Kingdom, multiple individuals with white robes were approaching. But as they were approaching the Clover Kingdom though, this is when they then suddenly stop. As one of them ends up crying out in horror while many others begin to look at him confused, before soon they also start screaming out in horror. As one by one, each one of these individuals will feel a cold dead hand hold on to them, as this will be due to Radius's magic. Radius was currently looking at all this on the top of the barrier that's protecting the Clover Kingdom as he will be looking at the group with disgust, as he was currently using these zombies that he had created to hold him down. And as he does, this is when he ends up calling upon Nige, to which Nige ends up arriving at the scene, and as he does, he ends up taking a look at every last one of these individuals with a cold expression, which is surprising since most of the time, Nige is the most wholesome member of the group, or at least, that's only when he's with his friends. But when it comes to his enemies, Nige doesn't care at all. He slaughters them like they're nothing. As this is when Radius would then ask Nige if he wants to take care of them, to which Nige would say that he would do so gladly. As he summons out a generous snow tornado that ends up killing them off instantly. Now he would end up looking at the scene without any care in the world, as this is when he then ends up using a magical device to contact the others. On the other side of the kingdom, we also see Zora as he would be watching a bunch of other members approaching, but luckily he already set up his trap magic. And just like that, one by one, all the entire groups that were approaching would fall to his trap magic, every last one of them getting killed off in an instant. Azora would then respond by saying that he took care of them. And for the final location, this will be Asta as well as Nero. As the final group in white robes were approaching, these being the Eye of the Midnight Sun. As their final group was approaching, Asta would end up taking a peep at the leader, this being Veltos. As currently his goal was to enter inside the Clover Kingdom and capture the one with the magic stone, this being Fergolion. But as he was entering though, this is when suddenly Asta will end up appearing right in front of them. Now seeing Asta would cause many of them to prepare spells, but right as they do, this is when suddenly multiple seals would then appear on them, surprising them all. They wonder what was going on as only Veltos didn't have a seal, as he begins to ask Asta what he did. To which Asta would just calmly say that he didn't do anything, as this would be thanks to Nero. Up above, looking at all of them, Nero had just activated her magic, and thanks to the training that Asta had put his group through, as well as the training and understanding of their magic, they were able to accomplish way more powerful things, 
as Nero had just used her newly found gifted ability of sealing things as she's able to use it from a distance, being able to seal away their magic even though she's a far distance away. Although this did take up quite a bit of magic energy, Nero knew that from now on they won't be able to activate their spells unless they're able to take her down. Now, Vel tells after seeing that he's the only one left to fight, he tries to fight on Asta, but this is when Asta would then appear right in front of him, and before he even gets a chance, this is when Asta would just suddenly chop off his head. Now, every one of the group would just be there in shock, as they will see their leader be killed off in an instant, as they finally take a good look at Asta in shock. Asta ends up looking at every last one of them before smirking, as this is when each and every single one of them would then try to run away in terror, but unfortunately it was too late as Asta would just brutally end them all in an instant. They didn't stand a chance. As this would be a small speck of their power, as every last one of their group would take care of it before suddenly they end up using the device to call upon the Wizard King, telling him that everything was clear here. As we now turn our attention back to the Wizard King, as he just finished confronting Licht, he'll be thanking every single one of them for their help, as after that he ends up returning back to the Clover Kingdom to explain what had just occurred. Now eventually later on, Julius ends up returning back he ends up explaining about the Eye of the Midnight Sun and about their approach. And when they end up hearing about this, everyone, every last one of the Magic Knights would be very embarrassed and also ashamed of themselves, since they didn't even know that a group was approaching. But this only pegged the question, who exactly was the one to take care of it? And as Julius can already tell what exactly they're questioning, he ends up telling them that he's going to reveal it one day, but unfortunately now was not that day. As he tells every single one of them to prepare for the worst situation, as well as to prepare for any battle that may come up ahead, as after that they will then be dismissed. As we do a time skip, we eventually see Asta in Julius' office, as Julius begins to ask Asta to continue going on his hunt for the magic stones. Since everyone in that group, including Julius, now knows about the whole stories about the elves and the demon, he, Julius was trying his best to make sure that it doesn't happen, so he put his trust into Asta in the group. And Asta, after hearing this, will promise Julius that he will make sure nothing happens, and just as Asta was about to leave though, this is when Julius would then do something surprising as he ends up tossing Asta a sword. Asta ends up catching it as this will be the Demon Dweller sword. He'll be very surprised by it as this is when Julius ends up stating that on the mission that the Golden Dawn and the Black Bulls went on, the one that he just saved them from, they actually end, encountering, they actually end up encountering the sword by accident. Now Asta ends up taking the sword and is able to swing it freely as he ends up thanking Julius for this one. As after putting it in the grimoire and giving it an extra page, he heads off to continue on with his mission, as this is where we then have another time skip. During this time, Asta and his group continue getting stronger and stronger as they begin to eliminate bases of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, preventing them from trying to ever attack the Clover Kingdom. But unfortunately, that didn't stop them from attacking elsewhere, as during the time when Asta was in the midst of his training, he ends up getting a report from the Wizard King, an emergency actually, as he gives Asta the report that the Eye of the Midnight Sun were currently attacking a nearby village, with there only being one magic knight on standby. This ends up surprising Asta as he ends up agreeing to go over there, as he ends up calling upon his team. Unfortunately, some of the other ones were currently busy, that being Nero as she was currently looking for the other magic stones, as well as Zora. And there was also Radius who had to be who had to stay behind, considering the fact that his magic can't work from that distance. So if anything were to happen in the Clover Kingdom, they wouldn't know. So with no other choice, Asta decides to bring Nij, who was equally as strong, so he should be able to help out. As with that, the both of them end up going to Rebecca's village. Now currently in the village, everyone will be terrified, as the Midnight Sun members will be gathering up in one set, in one place. They will be threatening them, claiming that they would actually end up attacking them if they try to resist. As currently, the Eye of the Midnight Sun have begun to get desperate. They lost so many bases because of Asta and his group, and due to that, they need to try to find another way to re-establish another base. So they're trying to take over. So they're trying to take over this entire village. Rebecca will be there. As she's ter as she's currently terrified, as she's trying to protect her siblings. As even though she is scared currently, she still decides to stand up for them and make sure that they're safe. And this ends up catching the attention of one of the members, as he begins to actually taunt Rebecca and actually begins to make very rude and disgusting remarks. Rebecca stood there though and took it all, considering the fact that she was scared of that that if she said anything back, they might attack her siblings. And after seeing that Rebecca was not reacting, the man begins to get pissed off as he begins to make rude remarks and unbelievable accusations, saying that Rebecca must be looking down on him. This is when the man would then get a sick expression as he tries to attack one of Rebecca's siblings, which Rebecca was very terrified of as she tries to protect them. And just when the man was about to release his attack though, as he ends up raising up his hand, that hand 
will be lobbed off in an instant. The man will fall back to the ground in horror as he screams out in pain. All the while, Rebecca as well as all the villagers, including all the Eye of the Midnight Sun members, would also be surprised. As the man continues rolling on the ground in pain, this is when suddenly a blade would then stab him directly into the forehead, killing him off instantly, as everyone couldn't even see the guy move. Standing there currently protecting the villagers and Rebecca's sibling would be none other than Asa, as he ends up standing up and before staring at the group of Eye of the Midnight Sun members. Now instantly, every member would then turn to Asta, as they would then instantly declare that they should attack. And just like that, Asta would then be bombarded by multiple amount of spells, which causes Rebecca to worry as she cries out to him. But Asta, he wasn't afraid at all, as all he did was pull out a simple knife that had a little bit of anti-magic, and he was able to cut apart these spells like they were nothing. Everyone would be surprised, as Rebecca would also be in shock as well, as she was very thankful for the man for saving her siblings, and this man seems to be strong enough to actually take care of all these guys. Now this is when Asta would then look up into the sky as he ends up calling out to Neej. All the Midnight Sun members would end up looking into the sky as they end up seeing Neej there, currently sitting on top of the roofs. He'll be staring down at all of them coldly as this is when two of them would then jump onto the roof to attack him. But just as they were about to attack Neej, he ends up forming two snow blades that stab directly into their chest. Now Asta ends up looking at Neej before smirking as he tells Neej that he wants to see what he can do, as he wants to see how much has Neej improved. And Neej will end up smiling at Asta, thanking him for this opportunity, as suddenly throughout the entire village, a snowstorm begins to swarm. Everyone will look at it in shock, especially the Midnight Sun members as they all turn to Neej and try to attack him. But unfortunately for them, it was too late, as just as they were about to activate their spells, they would then feel it, as every last one of their bodies begin to feel colder and colder. And not only that, but they feel themselves getting tired. Cause you see, this storm was not some ordinary storm. This snow actually had a very drowsy effect on people, putting them in an endless sleep, preventing them from ever waking up. As just like that, one by one, every eye of the Midnight Sun member would slowly die off in an endless sleep, all the while Neej would be there staring, staring at them coldly. Asta would be smiling as he gives him a thumbs up, as even though this spell was supposed to affect everyone, thanks to the training that he had gotten from being in Asta's group, He's actually able to control it and actually aim it to the people he wants affected. So soon, after disposing of the bodies, they will then head out to the next area, as currently right now, the base of the Idomanite Sun was actually on the mountain. So after a little bit of a quick trial, they end up arriving at the mountain and they instantly begin to take care of the rest of them, as one by one, each and every single member would fall, until finally they end up arriving at the very base of the cave. But when they end up arriving at the base of the cave, however, this is when they are actually surprised as currently right now fighting off against this ginormous slime will be none other than Ghosh. As currently behind Ghosh will be none other than Marie. Asta will be very confused until if he finally remembers that Julius had told him that there was one magic knight on standby, and this was him. As Ghosh had simply came here to talk to his little sister and spend time with him, I'm sorry, and spend time with her, but the problem was was the fact that the Eye of the Midnight Sun had come to ruin everything. So he tried fighting off against all of them, but when they end up telling Ghost that their leader was actually in the cave, he decided to rush over there to put an end to him. Unfortunately, things did not turn out the way he expected. As currently right now, Ghost was running low on magic energy, and not only that, but he, has to, he also had to stay here to protect Marie, things were looking pretty bad for him. But right before Ghost can take any more damage, this is when Asta and Neej would then decide to jump in. As with both Asta and Neej here, they begin to take care of the Salamander with ease, not only that, but the rest of the members leaving only the leader of the operation, this being Sally. Now Sally was very impressed, concerning the fact that she just used a dark magic tool. But now seeing that they were here, she began to ask both Asta and Neej if they wanted to be her experiments. But unfortunately, neither of them wanted to be her experiments, as Asta ends up telling him to knock her out, so that way they can take her back for questioning, to which Neej would do so. Now that Sally was captured and now that everything was taken care of, Ghost would end up thanking them as he ends up taking Marie and leaving as both of them have a very deadpan expression. After that, Asta thanks Neej for his help as he decides to clean up everything else, but right when things were getting taken care of though, this is when suddenly Asta has to dodge out of the way of a light spear. As suddenly a portal would then open up as falling from the portal will be none other than Licht, aka Patri. As when Patri arrived, he would instantly place the blame on Asta. As thanks to Asta, multiple amount of his bases have been destroyed, not only that, but his plans have been slowed down tremendously, and he couldn't believe it. And now, he finally discovered the person who's been putting a stop to his plans, Asta. As Patri begins to explain that he's gonna kill Asta here and now, 
and that he's going to make him pay for ruining his plans. This is when Nij decides to step in, as he wants to protect Asta from Lick, so he decides to fight him himself. Now Asta looks at Nij and he's about to explain to him that he isn't ready for this, but unfortunately it was too late, as Lick begins to actually blitz Nij and actually begins to put up a good fight against him. As both Nij and Patri will fight off against each other, with Nij giving it all he's got, and Patri, well, he's definitely giving it something, but he's not giving it all he's got just yet. As Nij already telling that Patri's magic was way too strong for him at this point, he decides to try to get him with his ultimate technique, this being a hell blizzard, as he tried putting Patri to sleep, but unfortunately he activated the technique way too early, and also was able to cut onto it. He tried to run to save Nij, but unfortunately Nij was too late. As luckily, Patri is able to dodge out of the way of the Hell Blizzard, and not only that, but he's able to appear right behind, pa uh, sorry, Nij, and he's able to give him a nice slash across the back. Nij ends up getting pretty damaged, and also after seeing this, can only see red, as he ends up disappearing from sight. Now, as Patri thinks that he got the hand on Nij, he turns his attention back to Asta, only to feel a dagger go right through his chest, nearing his heart, honestly. He ends up looking at the scene in horror as he turns his attention back to Asta, who's not caring at all about what he just done. Now Patri ends up screaming in anger as he throws a light spear directly into Asta's face. But Asta once again disappears and appears right behind him, this time slashing him across the back. And every single strike that Asta inflicts on Patri will be infused with anti-magic, preventing him from controlling his magic that well. As eventually over time, Austin ends up landing enough slashes to the point where Patri ends up passing out due to bloodlust. And all that just for all that so he can get revenge for Nij. As after that, Austin ends up bringing out one of the sharper swords. This being one of the sharper swords, as he points it directly at Patri's neck. As he plans to stab into him though, this is when suddenly three portals would then open up, as falling from them would be none other than Voltos, Raya, and Fauna as they all decide to attack at Asta simultaneously. Asta is able to dodge out the way, luckily, not only that, but he's able to actually protect Nietzsche at the same time. As Asta ends up looking at Nietzsche, he already realized that the longer he stays in here, the more that damage to Nietzsche was going to affect him, as he ends up getting more and more angry and realized that he couldn't hold back. This is when he didn't ask for Libe's help, and Libe would instantly agree to it, not wanting to lose his brother for this. As is when Asta wouldn't feel it, the flow of anti-magic, as he ended up bringing out the Demon Slayer sword. Now by this point, Fauna, Voltos, and Raya will all rush at Asta in order to attack him, but this is when to their surprise, Asta ends up getting a very demonic wing, not only one, but two of them, and his eyes take a very reddish and demonic turn. As this is when we then see Asta in his fully complete black mode. Now, instantly, all of them will be surprised as this is when Asta would suddenly end up appearing right in front of Voltos as he ends up slicing him with his sword. Voltos ends up getting sent flying and having a ginormous anti magic slash mark across his chest as he tries to activate his beast claws, but unfortunately, it's not working. Now, Raya, after seeing this, will try to intervene as well as he brings out a bunch of light spears that he copied from Licked, but Asta, after seeing this, would then deflect it with the Demon Slayer sword. This is when finally Fauna decides to intervene as she appears right behind Asta and shoots off a stream of fire. But just as the fire was approaching, this is when Asta would then pull out another blade, as he ends up cutting through it using the Demon Dweller sword. So now Asta will be du dual wielding both swords as he will be fighting off against all three members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun. And thanks to the boost that he's getting from the anti-magic, Asta is completely dominating every last one of them as they're not able to do anything. As after slashing at them multiple times and giving them multiple injuries, this is when Asta decides that he had enough as he decides to finally end it. As this is when Asta wouldn't turn to Voltos as he'll be the first to go. As Asta ends up piercing him with the Demon Dweller Sword, this is when Asta would then command the anti-magic to begin to absorb all of Voltos magic, causing the sword to, bleem, to glow a ginormous orange color. As Voltos ends up looking at the sword that stabbed into him, this is when he then looks on in surprise as Asta would then use his very own magic against him. As with a mighty slash, Austin is destroying the entire cave, causing it to collapse and falling on top of the rest of the members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun. As Voltos ends up looking at it, he can do nothing more with C as this was where he would actually die. All the while, Raya, Fauna, and Licht were all able to get away. Now at the same time though, Austin ends up exiting out of this form as he ends up taking Nij and ends up leaving the area as he ends up cursing himself for letting everything happen. As we now once again do a time skip. Soon after taking care of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, Asta ends up taking Nij to emergency recovery 
as luckily medical Nadris will be there on standby to actually help him recover. Luckily Nadris is able to recover but he still feels very disappointed in himself as he had lost the fight against Licht even though he thought for sure that he was strong. Now at first Nadris thought that Asta was going to kick him out the group but luckily Asta doesn't do that. In fact Asta was very proud about, about the fact that Nadris was able to do so much and that the only reason that he lost to Lick was because of the fact that he was inexperienced at this point, as Lick still had way too much battle experience. But still nonetheless, Nish promised to get even stronger, and so did Asta, as he still couldn't believe that he let that happen. He knew that he should have intervened much sooner, but still nonetheless, it's thanks to him that Nish almost got completely killed off. So with that thought in mind, Asta had promised himself that from now on, he's never going to let it happen again. As with that, we will have ourselves moving forward. For the rest of the story, we see Austin and his group continuously take down Eye of the Midnight Sun members' uh, bases. Not only that, but they're still trying to locate the very first one, the very main base of theirs. But unfortunately, no matter how much they look for it, nowhere to be seen. Now eventually, they still continue on their hunt for the magic stones, and one by one, they're able to find them all. As they even go to the Seabed Temple, as instead of the Black Bulls going, Julius will end up sending out Asta's group. And mind you, after the encounter at Rebecca's village, Asta's group got way stronger, as they made a vow to never let something like that happen to them, or never, never let anything like that happen to one of their own. So thanks to that, Asta's group is strong enough to easily get past the Seabed Temple, gaining another magic stone. And soon after that, they end up going past a couple of few events. For example, the captain of the Purple Orcas was turned out to be a traitor. Luckily, Julius as well as the rest of the Magic Knights were there, so they were, so they were able to capture him with ease. Another thing was the fact that Julius actually revealed to Asta that he was planning to reveal his group much sooner, to which Asta would agree to it. As after another few moments of just simply destroying more Midnight Sun bases, Asta and his team would then go after the next magic stone, this being in the Witch's Forest. They were able to get this intel thanks to the fact of Asta's other members that are working in the division, as he was able to actually command them to scope out the Witch's Forest and they were able to find a magic stone. So with that, Asta and his team ended up going to the, to the Witch's Forest, as after that, they end up eventually end up getting an encounter with the Queen of the Witches. Now at first, she was very offended by Austin and his group, and actually tried to put them in their so-called place, but she would soon realize how wrong she was, as Austin and his group were able to overpower her instantly, as she was unable to do anything. Now, before they decide to resort to violence though, they begin to once again demand for the magic stone, as they begin to explain all the bad things that could possibly happen with her having it. But before they're able to complete this explanation though, this is when the Eye of the Midnight Sun would then attack once again, this time attacking the Witch's Forest. Now Austin ends up seeing this, as well as the rest of his group, as this is when he then orders them to take care of it, to which they do. As every last one of Austin's members will take care of, a, of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, with Austin not doing anything in this timeline. Because the thing is, his group is strong enough to take care of it by themselves. All the while, the Queen of the Witches just, is, just sits there and just watches everything unshocked as every last one of them were stronger, stronger than even her. As she looks at everything on shock, this is when she then turns back to Asta, as she could already tell that Asta was the strongest one out of all of them, even though he didn't have any magic. That honestly terrifies her a little bit as Asta turns his attention back to her and once again asks for the magic stone. So soon after taking care of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, the Diamond Kingdom would also end up arriving. And at first, they did try to pick a fight with Asta's group, but unfortunately that ended up resulting in them losing. As Mars was part of the group, he ends up actually seeing Fauna, who was actually being sealed up by, well, Nero. And instantly seeing Fauna, he instantly breaks into tears as he tries to talk to her. Now at first, Fauna does not recognize Mars at all, but sooner or later she gradually begins to actually realize who he is, and thanks to that, she's able to awaken her old personality, and the reincarnated Fauna is actually gone allowing for Fauna as well as Mars to be together. So now that Mars and Fauna were reunited, this is when Ladros would then try to intervene. As he tries to start up some trouble, but fortunately, Asta's group were able to shut him up and actually make him change for the better. Now soon after this, both Mars and Fauna thank Asta as well as the rest of his group for his help, as Asta ends up telling them that they're fine. Now as they end up leaving though, this is when Mars would then actually offer an alliance with Asta, as he could see that Asta was extremely beneficial towards him as well as the rest of the future for the Diamond Kingdom, to which Asta will end up agreeing to it. As after this, Asta ends up getting the magic stone from the Queen of the Witches, and after that we now finish the Witches Forest arc. As from now on, we're going to skip over a couple of events considering the fact that Asta and his party do not actually change much of the story. In the Royal Magic Knights arc, 
Julius does not change nothing much from the announcements. As the only difference here is that since Alistair is not in the Black Bulls and since he's not making or he's not motivating everyone, this ends up causing them to still remain at the bottom of the barrel. Although they are doing slightly better for themselves because Noel is there, but still nonetheless, they're still at the bottom of the barrel. But the one thing that actually ends up changing is the fact that Asta's squad is actually revealed. As when Asta's squad gets revealed, everyone will be in shock of it, but not only all the citizens, but also all the magic knights as well. As finally all the black bulls actually get to see Asta, and not only that, but also the Golden Dawn, since they were the only ones that even got an encounter with Asta. As everyone look at the squad, as they actually see that this squad is way different from the Magic Knights, as they didn't have any flashy attire or any symbol that affiliated them with the Clover Kingdom. As everyone can tell that this squad was meant to stand on business, nothing else. Now everyone would have a round of applause for Asta's squad, but this is when one of the people in the crowd would then point at Asta before asking why they couldn't sense any magic. Now Julius ends up taking a look at Asta before explaining that Asta was simply born without any magic. This shocks everyone before many of them begin to doubt this entire squad's abilities. After all, what, how, how could someone with no magic accomplish anything in a world that's supposed to be ruled by magic? Even the captains begin to look at Asta with doubt, but only Yami stayed looking as he was honestly deeply interested. At this, this is when Levi would then appear on Asta's shoulder, as this is when he ends asks Asta if he wants to do it, with Asta agreeing. At this, Levi would then suddenly call upon the Grimoire as is when the Grimoire would then flip multiple pages before suddenly bringing out an axe. As Asta would then grab a hold of the axe, this is when suddenly the entire area would end up losing magic. Literally all the lights that were turned on by magic would be turned off as everyone would be coated in this weird aura of dark and red energy that stops them from using magic or magic even being activated. As this axe was able to generate an entire anti-magic field preventing magic from being activated while in the space. Everyone could not believe it, as Asta would stare at all of them as he begins to release his own set of killing intent, causing many of them to actually be failing for their lives. This is when Asta would then put the axe back into the grimoire. As you see, the axe was actually one of Asta's strongest weapons. As everyone would look at Asta in fear and in respect, they decide to nonetheless still respect the decision of the Wizard King and put their trust into this new unit. Now after this, the Royal Magic Knight exams do not actually end up happening, because Asta's squad is going to be the one to take care of the Eye of the Midnight Sun. And they do exactly that. As finally, after so many months have gone by, they finally found where the Eye of the Midnight Sun's main base is. And they decide to tackle it. As after gathering all their troops, as well as having all his friends by his side, Asta, as well as the rest of his men, would then charge in into the base. With each one of the group's leaders leading a squad. As one by one, every member of the Eye of the Midnight Sun would then fall to them as they end up getting taken away and interrogated, as this will only leave two members left, this being Patri and Raya. They couldn't believe it, their plans had failed. As they end up glaring angrily at the locations of those who are attacking them, this is when suddenly the door would then burst open, as walking through will be none other than Asta, and along beside him will be none other than Nero, as both groups would then stare at each other. This when Licht as well as Raya would then shoot attacks at Asta, while also deflecting each and every single one of them. As seeing the fact that they are not going to be able to talk to each other, this is when Asta then decides to end it, as he realized that unfortunately these guys were too clouded by anger and judgment, and talking to them, it was pointless. As it seems as if anger as well as everything that happened to them has finally clouded their brain. So with that, Asta realized he had no choice. Asta ends up fighting off against the two of them, as he faces off against both Raya and Patri, as he ends up giving it all he's got. Nero decides to stay behind as she's actually here for a lookout as she was trying to sense where the word demon may appear. Now as she ends up looking at the fight between Asta, Patri, and Raya, this is when she actually ends up sensing and end up approaching. As even though it was extremely dark, in the very corner of the room you could see it. The word demon. Although it was extremely small, you couldn't barely sense its presence. It was there. It was watching everything and they couldn't believe it. How? Everything he built up, it was now crumbling right before him. He ends up cursing out at Asta, as he could already tell that was the main reason why his plan failed. As he curses Asta's existence before deciding to head off as a way to find out a way to fix everything, this is when he would then be stopped by Nero. Nero would end up appearing right in front of him and end up seeing him right there. Now currently right now he doesn't have his full form, he doesn't have his grimoire either, so currently right now he's at his weakest state. Now he ends up cursing at Nero as he tries to get out of here but unfortunately it was too late. 
Nero had already trapped him in this dimension. As Asta, after seeing that Nero had finally gotten the demon, he knew that it was finally time to finish off both Patri and Raya. As he ends up apologizing for everything that happened to them, with Patri just screaming at him to shut up as he tries to attack him with multiple light spears, only for Asta to bring out his own spear. As he ends up cutting through every one of the other light spears that had appeared, and after that, this is when he ends up using Libe's energy to go through him, as he ends up getting a large amount of anti-magic allowing him to take form, as Asta would gain a new anti-magic form. And this form was mostly meant for speed since Asta was using a spear. Now Licht as well as Raya seeing this will begin to feel themselves tense up, but still nonetheless they still try to attack Asta only for Asta to speed boost them. As Asta ended up appearing and disappearing right before their eyes, they kept trying to hit him but unfortunately it was too late, as is when Asta would then barrage them with a bunch of spear strikes from all directions, as literally Asta was hitting them with even after images, they were not even able to keep up. As eventually after barraging them with enough blows, both Raya as well as Patri end up passing away. But the thing is, this was where something surprising would happen. As finally that now that Patri's soul has left the body, this will end up leaving William to be free. As William will end up coming back and he will be surprised to see that number one, his body will be healed up, and number two, that Patri was gone. Austin would be surprised as well, as well as Nero, since they actually thought that, you know, Patri was just a certain individual. They didn't know that he connected with William, so it was surprising. But still nonetheless, now that the Eye of the Midnight Sun members have been taken care of, now he left the demon. Now as Austin is walking towards the demon, as both Nero as well as Austin loom over it, the word demon begins to release streams of curses, cursing out the both of them for ruining his plans. Now as Austin ends up looking around, he decides to ask Nero if she wants to finish him off, or should it be him? And this is when Nero would then say that she would gladly like to finish him off herself. As Asta after hearing this would nod as he backs away from Nero, as this is when she would then crack her knuckles before she then gets to work. As throughout the entire Eye of the Midnight Sun's base, all you hear is the scream of the word demon, as well as a barrage of blows. As by the time that Nero was finally done, the demon was put down. Now Asta would take in the sight as he would nod his head as that was exactly what him, what him and Libra are going to do to Lucifero. As after this, this will be the end to the Elf Reincarnation. Now soon after this, a new threat would soon come to arise as this will be the Spade Kingdom. Now already some rumors about them have begun to spread and this will cause Julius to worry. Now mind you, a, co a couple of months have went by since the Elf Reincarnation, so he decided to send Austin and his group to go to the Heart Kingdom to request an alliance. Now Austin and his group would do so, they do eventually end up encountering Gajin, but unfortunately even he at this point does not stand a chance against Asta's group, although they all acknowledge that he is strong. Eventually they end up meeting up with the Heart Queen as after that and after having a little bit of a discussion, both the Clover Kingdom and the Heart Kingdom decide to team up with each other, as Julius will put his trust into Asta's group in the meantime to take care of the Spade Kingdom while the rest of them have time to train. And that's exactly what Asta does. Him and his group slowly but surely begin to overwhelm the Spade Kingdom, as just like the Midnight Sun, they begin to take care of the bases, one by one. Now mind you, Asta's group, I mean the main group, is not the only strong one, as every one of the grunt workers in Asta's group were also stronger too, since they also have their own daily training schedule and everything. So thanks to this, Asta's group was actually putting up a good fight against the Spade Kingdom, as one by one, Deku's squad would raid through the camps of, their, of the Spade Kingdom, annihilating them one by one. Now this will end up eventually getting back to the Dark Triad as they can do nothing more but curse out whoever is doing it, until they finally pinpoint that it was going to be Asta and his group. And after seeing this, they instantly decide to split up with each other as a way to hunt down each one of the members. Cause mind you, there's five of them. As this is when he ends up sending out Vanika to take care of both Nero, as well as Nij, and he decides to send out Zenon to take care of Radies as well as Zora, and for him, he's going to take care of Asta. But unfortunately, for Dainty, that was not going to work out. As a certain amount of time would then pass by, as each one of these individuals would eventually end up encountering each one of the members they were supposed to go after. As Vanaka ends up encountering Nero and Nij, as Zeno would end up encountering Radies as well as Zora. All the while, Dainty decides to face off against Asta by himself. And this was a moment that every last one of them were waiting for. As Nero as well as Nij will begin to dominate Vanika with ease. As instantly the very first thing that Nero does as soon as Vanika appears is put a seal on her. This seal ends up preventing her from trying to regenerate 
or trying to do anything that may potentially allow her to survive. Now, uh, at first she was surprised at this, she would think that she would have an easier time, since after all, even though she couldn't regenerate, what's the point of regenerating when they can't do any lasting damage? That's what she thought at first. But this is when she would then be proven wrong, as her blood magic would turn out to be useless against them. As Nero will be able to seal away her blood magic at the same time, all the while Nige continued de delivering heavy blows. This one ended up leaving her with only her physical strength, and although she had physical strength, and I mean she had like literally superhuman strength and everything, thanks to the training that Asa had put them through, as well as thanks to the training that they put each other through, they were able to actually keep up with her when it comes to physical strength. As Monica tries her hardest, as she even goes straight up to 100% of her demon's capabilities, but even with that, she stood no chance. As after fighting with her for quite a while, this is when Nige would then decide to land the finishing blow. As he ends up bringing out a Hell Blizzard, this one being way stronger compared to the one that he did when he was at Rebecca's village. As this one was way more stronger and destructive, since he was only aiming for Vonica. As this will bring the end for Vonica, as well as the beginning of the end for the Dark Triad. Next was Xenon, as when he faced off against Radius as well as Zora, they had to admit they had a harder time. As thanks to Xenon's spatial magic as well as Scott, um, sorry, bone magic, he was extremely difficult to deal with and tricky. And the craziest thing was because of the fact that he wasn't even bringing out his full power right away, he was only at 50%. Now eventually this ended up causing both Zora as well as Radius to get serious as they also tried to bring out their full capabilities as well. This ends up leading up to a very tricky fight between both groups. As while well, Xenon had his bone magic, which was pretty much a bunch of hacks, both Radius as well as Zora had their own hacks as well as their own intelligence as well. As the fight would go down to the wire in the very last minute, to eventually both Zora as well as Radius end up making a union magic, as they end up combining both their magic together to actually take down and seal away Xenon's demon. Now this ends up weakening Xenon completely, as the only thing he's able to do left is try fighting with his very last breath, but unfortunately, they will prevent that too, as Zoro would use a very amped up stun magic seal as a way to trap Xenon. As after this, this is when Radius would then bring out one of his strongest creations of one of his soul corpses. As after that, he ends up using it to take care of Xenon, finishing him off and allowing them to win the fight. As for the final battle, it will be Asta facing off against Dainty, or, we, or could you even call that a battle? As instantly when Dainty had arrived, he had instantly began to talk trash about Asta and their group as he begins to explain how Asta was beneath him. But the thing is, Asta already knew who this man was, and so did Libe. As Libe, after so many years of spending time with Asta and after getting stronger for so, many, for so long, he had finally developed his full form, as he stood right beside Asta. Both of them ended up staring down at Dainty, but more precisely, they'll be staring down at Lucifero, the man who took everything away from them. As with that, both Libe and Asta wouldn't look at each other before nodding. As this is when suddenly both of them would end up merging together into one, as just like that, this is when Asta would then bring out the axe. Now remember how I told you early on that, that the axe was one of the strongest weapons that Asta had? It was for good reason. As when they end up using their abilities together, this is when the axe would end up taking over not only this entire area, but taking over the entire spade kingdom that they were currently fighting in. Dainty would be surprised and also everyone else that were currently in the midst of combat, as they couldn't believe it. Their magic were just completely deactivated here. Asta will be looking directly at Dainty, as this is when he ends up throwing the axe directly at him, like Thor style, as this axe ends up chopping off of Dainty's arm. Now Dainty ends up screaming out in horror as he tries to activate more of Lucifero's power, even to the point where he ends up rushing to directly to go to 100%. But when he goes into 100%, even that wasn't enough, as he does end up getting a little bit of a strength boost as well as some regeneration. But unfortunately, thanks to the anti-magic field as well as thanks to that injury, he was not healing it properly. Now Dainty tries to fight back, but unfortunately, in this type of armor that Asta has, this armor is very more brutish pretty much. Pretty much it's mostly relying on physical strength and absolutely dominating your opponent. So that means Asta is just basically just beating down on this man. As Asta gives this man a beating so bad to the point where he actually begins to beg for his life, but unfortunately, they're not giving him an opportunity. As eventually time would go by if Asta is just simply beating down on Dainty, this is when Asta would end up look directly into Dainty's eyes or more precisely Lucifero, as Lucifero can do nothing more but look at them. And for the very first time in ever history, the demon known as the king of them all would actually feel pure fear as he looks directly into Asta's eyes, and also Libe's eyes technically. 
as both of them would end up conveying all their inner emotions into one look. As just like that, Dainty knew that he's not going to be able to survive this. As he screams one last time for them to spare him, but unfortunately it was too late. As this one suddenly Austin's raising the axe in the air as he brings up a ginormous amount of anti-magic into the axe. As Libby ends up looking directly at Lucifer one last time, as he begins to explain to Lucifer what exactly is going to happen to him when they finally end the meeting face to face. But this time it's not going to be in the human world, no. Instead, they're going to take it to him, in the demon world. As with those final words, Asa ends up bringing down the axe and ending off Dainty, leaving nothing left. As a generous array of anti-magic ends up annihilating all magic in the area, knocking it out for many hours. As after this, there will be nothing left of Dainty. As finally, Asta and Libya will end up exiting out of the form, as they both pan a little bit considering the form takes up a large amount of energy. But still nonetheless, they had completed it. They finally got revenge for Lichita. Or at least for now. As Asta and Libya end up getting up to each other, Asta ends up explaining to Libya that, that Lucifer is still out there and that they need to hunt him down. To which Libya would agree. As is when they then turn to each other and give each other a fist bump. As they both smile at each other promising that they're going to make sure that he ends up going down. And they're going to make sure he goes down brutally. As this is where we then move forward into the future. By this point of the story, everyone has, has accomplished their goals. Even Asta and Libe. Now by this point, Asta after accomplishing his goals, he decides to settle down and actually have a family. Not only that, but he also decides to retire his role as the captain of the unit as he decides to give that role to Nij. Seeing as the fact that Nij was the most dedicated of them all, and even though Zora was supposed to be his right hand man, Zora himself also even got himself a, a family. So Nij was the next head up in the entire division as he was going to be the captain of it and he was going to lead it well, Asta could tell. As after that, Asta would enjoy his final moments being wealthy, living a happy family, and also reminiscing about his mother along with Libe. As this will be the end to what if Asta was Toji Fushiguro's reincarnation. Thank y'all so much for tuning into this what if. You guys do not want to know how long this what if took to make, alright? Because I kid you not, this what if took a lot out of me. And it wasn't the fact that, oh, like, oh, the what if was like hard to make or anything or that like the, sto like, the story was bad. No, it's because of the fact like there were so many routes the story could have gone that I legit was just stuck in my room wondering like, dang, which one should I take? Because the story could have started off differently. There were so many alternative endings. Like there were so many things that this story had. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. This would have had a lot of a large amount of potential. And I hope that I brought out as much as I could. So, yeah, with that being said, guys, it's your host, HD Sim right here. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy this what if. I try my best to make this what if as quickly as possible. And not only that, but I also try to make it good and consistent. So, yeah, there's that too. And, yeah, hopefully, you guys do enjoy yourselves at least. Because I, you know, made sure that you guys are comfortable and everything. And with that being said to y'all, it's your host, Sage D Samurai. And he's signing off. Peace and have a lovely day.